Hey, welcome back. So, last time we talked about sprites. We're gonna continue doing that in this episode, but we're gonna take a closer look at the application I used last time. So, sprite pad, as it's called. But before that, let's do a quick repetition. So, by now we have seen that we have eight sprites. We can use eight sprites at the same time. And every sprite has a memory address for the X position and the Y position. And also the sprite pointer, the memory address that contains the, uh, let's, let's call it the index of what graphic to use on this particular sprite. So every sprite have, has those um, addresses, X position, Y position and sprite pointer. So what we didn't look at uh, last time uh, was how we can uh, change the color of a sprite. So <clears throat> we have uh, X position, Y position, sprite pointer, but there's also an address that keeps track of what color the sprite is. Now. This is a little hard to swallow, I guess, but um, I said it last time as well. Every sprite can have one color. Even if they're multicolor, it can have, every sprite can have one color. So this, uh, uh, this area for memory address for the sprite color, let's take sprite zero for example. This address holds the color of sprite zero. So I just made an example here. Right now, let's say that sprite zero is green. Now remember, when we uh, change the colors of the uh, border area, we uh, did pretty much the same thing. Only then we used um, another address. Maybe you remember this, D020. Remember you remember that address. That's the address that keeps track of the co color of the border. So this is basically the same thing, but instead of keeping track of the border, it keeps track of a specific uh, keeps track of the color of a specific sprite. So color for sprite zero, color for sprite one, color for sprite two, color for, color for sprite three, and so on. So every uh, sprite has their own memory address where their color is stored. So you remember these color codes, right? Uh, color white, for example, that's color code one. So in this memory address, the way I have it set up right now, now we have uh, the number one. It's just a number, right? So we have the number one stored in this memory address. For this one, black, black, that's color code zero. So in this memory address, there would be a zero right now. So uh, every color has their own color code. And that's what's stored in these memory addresses. So let's uh, get this out of the way. Why did I say that? every sprite can only have one color. I mean, last time we talked about this multicolor thing. We even saw an example where a sprite had three colors. Well, we touched a little on this last time. So let's take a closer look at how that works. So like I said, every sprite can only have one color, like we see here. But we have these two extra colors. So if a sprite is in uh, multicolor mode, we can enable multicolor mode. Um, yeah, we can have multicolor mode or high resolution mode for any of these sprites. So I briefly mentioned it last time, but we can uh, we can mix and match. So this sprite could be multicolor. This could be high resolution this could be high resolution, this could be multicolor, and so on. 
So we can enable, uh, you know, we can switch between these. So we can mix and match. So let's say now that Sprite Zero was set in multicolor mode. All right. So Sprite Zero, that's green. But I've set up my uh, extra colors. We have two extra colors, extra color one, extra color two. Right now, I've set my extra color one to light blue. I set extra color two to brown. That means that now, I, for my sprite zero, I could have a sprite that's um, I could have a sprite that's green, light blue, and brown. For um, let's go down here to sprite four, and now I'm going to set that one to multicolor. That sprite is going to be multicolor now. So now, now that sprite can be gray, light blue, and brown. So, like I mentioned, move move this one up a little bit like that. So. As I mentioned last time, these extra colors, they are shared for all sprites when we're using this um, multicolor mode. So yes, they can have three colors, but these two need to be set. And then they are shared for all sprites. So that's something to keep in mind when we're um, designing our graphics for our game. So if we want to use multicolor mode, we need to keep this in mind that these two extra colors are shared for all sprites. But in addition to that, every sprite can have their own color as well. And one more thing before we leave our Excel spreadsheet. So I said that the extra color one and extra color two need to be set. Well, they also have their own uh, memory addresses. So the extra color one, that's D025 and um, extra color two, that's D026. So the two memory addresses before uh, the other sprite colors start. 25, 26, 27, 28, and so on. So, these two extra colors uh, need to be set, or they are actually set by default, but you need to choose what color with these two addresses. So let's say that I want uh, my extra color one to be yellow, then I would need to um, store the number seven. That's the color code for yellow. So I need to store seven in here. And then of course, that means that I changed uh, extra color one, which is going to make, which is going to change it for all sprites, of course. So extra color one, extra color two, they also have their own memory addresses. All right, so let's talk about sprite pad. Now, maybe you saw uh, my community post today, or maybe you didn't, but anyway, we are going to use two paid applications for drawing sprite graphics or background graphics. A quick word about that. So um, there are free versions of both of those two, but they are super, super out of date. Uh, at least one of those is from uh, 2011. So that's 13 years old. Uh, so they are very out of date and they also um, they are also missing some functionality that we will be using. So I really don't recommend the free versions. Uh, however, I highly recommend uh, buying the paid ver versions. Now uh, each of these uh, costs uh, 15 US dollars each. But if you buy them together in a combo pack, they're $20. So the combo pack is a very va good value. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave the link for that uh, in the description for this video. 
So, and uh, by the way, uh, the author of these apps is a really great guy. He uh, listens to the community and I've talked to him a few times and he even added uh, a functionality to the other application that we will be using. And he, uh, he publishes, publishes new updates and uh, he is very much in touch with the community. So I highly recommend SpritePad and ChartPad. But right now we're going to look at SpritePad. So the installation is really simple. You download a zip file, you unzip it and you end up with this folder. So if I go into the folder, it's as simple as just starting this. Now you might get confused here because there are three ones here. So if you have a modern computer, you could use this W64 or this net thing. Uh, if you have an old, very, very old computer, like at least 10 years old, then maybe you have a 32-bit computer and you would have to use this one. But I'm going to start this W64. So here we are in SpritePad. Now we did look at it briefly last time. So we have seen what it can do. But let's just take a quick overview here. So we have a few windows here. This, of course, looks kind of familiar. It's like uh, another paint program. We have some colors over here and, and uh, yeah, different options over here. Then we have this one called the Sprite Set. So let's get back to that one in just one second. Uh, over here we have our Sprite Editor. Now we already seen this one. This is where you draw your sprites. So, high, um, multicolor, multicolor sprites, or high resolution. The way we switch between those two is just by checking or unchecking. Oh, unchecking or checking or unchecking this check checkbox. Sorry. Uh, now. The reason I got an error message right now was because uh, now I am in high resolution mode here. High resolution sprite. You can see this, these small square pixels. I have selected a multicolor, one of the extra colors here. So it's not going to let me draw with that color since this sprite is in high resolution. So I need to choose the sprite color. Remember the sprite color. So I need to choose that one before I can draw. And since this is a high resolution sprite, it can only have one color. All right, <clears throat> so let's get back to this one. Sprite set. What are we actually looking at? Well, you might have gotten an idea already. So this is where we have all our sprite graphics. By default, it's set at 160, which means that there are 160, uh, um, let's call them tiles, whatever, small squares here, where you can draw some graphics. In other words, 160 sprite graphics. All right, cool, 160, that's nice. Well, now, we need to remember something from last time. Because <clears throat> if you remember, how much does one sprite take up? How much space does one sprite take up? Well, we figured out last time that one sprite is 64 bytes. One sprite graphic takes up 64 bytes. All right. So, if we take 64 now, 64 times 160, 64 times 160, that's 10,240 bytes. If we divide that by 1,024, which is one kilobyte, 
you'll see that th these sprites now take up 10 kilobytes of space. Okay, that right now, maybe it's hard to place it. The, is that uh, is, the, is that a lot? Is not is that not so much? You know, maybe it's hard to see that right now. But 10 kilobytes, that's a pretty big chunk of the Commodore 64 memory. When we think about that, in total, it's 64 kilobytes. That's the total memory of the Commodore 64. Now, I've said that we're not going to be using the, the total area. We're just going to be using the free basic area. The free memory area that's free by default. And that's just below 40 kilobytes. So, we have 40 kilobytes. If we use 10 kilobytes for sprites, that's a pretty decent chunk. And remember, we're not gonna, the sprites aren't the only thing we need for our game. We need sprites, music, tons of tons of tables. Those take up a lot of space. We need space for our code. We need space for uh, our levels, all the, all the setup around our levels and all that. So everything takes up a lot of space. So in the way that I have planned this game, we can't have 160 sprite graphics. So, uh, we are going to come, come, sorry, we're going to come back to this exactly how we can plan, plan memory usage. Because uh, we need to do some math, we need to do some planning before we can decide how much we want of this and that. So, uh, I can give you a little spoiler right now, I've done some math and if I rem remember correctly, uh, we can have 80 sprite graphics in uh, the game that I have planned. So we are reducing it by half. But as you see, 80, that's not too bad. You can still make a lot of uh, graphics here. So um, that's the sprite set. That's the entire, the, all of the different sprite graphics that we can make. And this is where you decide how many you want. Yeah. Um, also, let's just quickly take a look over here. So let's go back to this one, for example. Here, when we are drawing a sprite. Now, this is uh, really basic stuff. Down here, you just change your color. So this is um, the high resolution sprite, right? Let's see what happens with this one. So here we can see we are changing the color for our multicolor sprite. Now, if we want to change the uh, extra colors, we go to one of these. So this is multicolor one extra color one, multicolor two, extra color two. So we can change those as well. But we need to remember what we talked about just a minute ago. This would change it for every single sprite. So let me draw another sprite here and use these multicolors. So this might be obvious, but just to be sure. So now I'm going to change this multicolor to red or black maybe. So you can see it changed on both of these. So as I said, we need to be aware of that when we're designing our sprites. And just one last thing, this sprite is blue. So you can see here, a sprite graphic. And this sprite graphic is green. Yeah, just to drive home the point completely. All right, so that's the, the basics. It's really simple, actually. Um, we can also do some uh, simple things like, uh, 
let's make uh, an arrow for example like uh, that yeah kind of looks like an arrow so what we could do we could uh, select this arrow um, click ctrl c on our keyboard ctrl v to paste it so simple copy and paste operation uh, and by the way we just added one more sprite graphics i'm going to delete one so we don't go over 80. but my point is copy and paste simple operation but what we can do now with this the one that i copied is that we can click this uh, button up here flip left to right and then it does the obvious just flips it in that direction and there's also one flip top to bottom so it's uh, obvious of course but let's just uh, for demonstration purposes show that as well so we have this flip uh, buttons that are really handy really handy for us there are, there are also some um, uh, more advanced things here like rotate for example so you could uh, make sprite pad do some rotation graphics uh, let's see let's try to rotate this one in 32 angles mm, maybe that didn't work uh, let's see here 32 angles yeah whatever the point is there are some special things there we won't be using these special ones but these flip ones are really important now also this can be important for us so if you uh, like this one maybe i drew it a little low i want it higher up so there's an arrow for that which moves it one pixel up one pixel down or left or right so these arrows are really nice just if you just need to move your sprite graphic a pixel in any direction and normal copy and paste things here so we don't even we don't actually need to go super into detail because these are actually the basics it's, it's really simple now i can mention that down here you see that sprite animations yes or no um unfortunately this is not some magic thing that's going to create some animation code for us this is in case we want to test out how an animation would look so for example if i have these three animation frames and i want to see how that looks in an animation i could uh, go here sprite animations yes and then i get this window and right now it's set up with four animations so let me go to this first one and it says from what frame to what frame and what timer how quickly do i want to do play this animation so let's say that i want to see how an animation would look if i had these three frames so from uh, you can see down here so from sprite zero, four five six so from four to six let me set two six here and four so now i can ha see uh, how an animation with these three frames would look from number four to number six sequentially like that and let's click this play button and this is what is uh, what that animation would look like so it's it's a nice function to um, test out how things are going to look in our game but as i said animation systems we need to make that ourselves all right there are also some other fancy things there like sprite set and, and stuff like that if you want to combine uh, several sprites to make a, a, a really big one we are not going to look at that either but 
let's take a look at uh, some examples. Want to continue? I haven't saved. Yes, I want to continue. So let's take a look at um, an example file that I made here. So I just uh, drew a little ninja guy here. So this is to explain how we think when we design our sprites. Uh, first of all, uh, I just drew a sprite for his idle stance. So he's just gonna stand and I'm, I'm not touching the joystick, it's just gonna stand like that. But I want to have a walking animation. Now because we have so few animation frames here, we need to be really careful. So I can't have a smooth animation with 50 frames. That's gonna take up most of these frames. So I, I need to keep in mind, I have to uh, save some graphics for enemies, for power-ups, whatever. So I need to be careful with how many uh, tiles I can use here. So the way I did that, with, in order to make a walking animation, I just added one more frame, like that. So for a walking animation, we can have just two frames. And we switch between the idle frame here and this one. So a walking animation would look like this. If you look at this guy. So, it doesn't look too bad. In fact, it's pretty common on the Commodore 64 and a lot of, and lot of other retro computers to have a simple walk animation like that. So, for the walking animation, it's just going to be two frames. Now, just so we don't... I mean, I could use this for a jump frame as well. So, a, a sort of jump animation. So we could look at this when it jumps as well, but let's let's not get too boring here. Let's have a little variety. So I made a special one for his jump frame too. So I have three frames, idle and this walking thing, and I have this one for jumping. So I have idle, walk and jump three different states for our little guy here but I've just used three frames here so by combining these in some way we could um, it could be pretty effective now if you ever have if you have ever made a game for the NES Nintendo Entertainment System you know that the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System has hardware support for flipping sprites which means that you can just draw a sprite and if you want to flip it there's just a bit you need to set and the sprite is automatically flipped so you don't have to draw it all over again now for the Commodore 64 we don't have that the Commodore 64 does not have some flipping function for sprites like that so we actually need to draw our sprites facing left and facing right but because of what I just showed you that's really not a problem for us so now I have drawn this little ninja guy with the animation frames that I need so I just select the first one hold down my shift key select the last one and I just click ctrl C to copy click here and paste those frames Again, I need to be careful that I don't go over 80 here. So what I do now with these new frames that I copied, I just select them and I click this flip left to right. And there we go. So now I have uh, the animation frames for my little character for both left and right direction. So that's really handy really nice so that's one example let's take a look at another one yes I want to continue so this is for uh, another game that I made uh, you can see that it has a ton of sprite graphics in here in fact I have 128 sprite graphics so there's a ton of graphics in here now this is what I talked about how we can how we should plan 
our uh, our game. How many enemies do I need? How many uh, how many animation types do I need for my player, for my enemies, for for whatever? The more you plan ahead, the easier your job is going to be here in creating sprites. In fact, I'd like to um, do this so that every character has its own line. So every character in this game has eight frames of animation. The player, the enemies, so on. So, um, planning ahead is super important, both in terms of memory usage, but also to make sure that we have enough frames for what we want to include in our game. So, planning, especially, uh, no, when you're doing testing, is that's not so important. But when you're sitting down, when you want to make a real game, then this is super, super important. That you plan ahead as much as possible. All right, let's look at one more example. So, this uh, is another game that I made. Now, what's interesting about this is that I used the technique that we talked about where we have sprite overlay. That's a multicolor sprite and high resolution sprite, sprite on top of it. So that's what's going on here. We see this little guy. He's pretty detailed, kind of smooth edges, but he's also very colorful. That's because this is two sprites. It's one high resolution on top of the multicolor one. So here's the high resolution sprite. So it's just the outline like that. And we have transparent around him and we have transparent here in between the outlines. So if we do this, this is how the multi sorry. <coughs> This is how the multicolor sprite looks. It's just colors like this. But SpritePad has this great function where you can just click this uh, checkbox that says has overlay. And by clicking that, it shows us how this is going to look when this is on top of it. Of it. So this is just the outline. This is just a multicolor, but by clicking this one, we see them together like that. So that's a little more advanced. Uh, it's not that advanced really, but it's especially when you start programming in the, in the beginning, it's, it's more to keep track of because you have two sprites to keep track of instead of one. So you can experiment with that, of course, but um, for your first project, it might be a good idea to choose one or the other, but you know that's uh, entirely up to you. So um, those are a few examples to show how um, how we can use SpritePad, and I hope you can see that this is a really simple application. But let me go back to this ninja guy. This guy. So, now, there's a save button up here. Yeah, save project. When you save whatever you draw in here, it's going to create a sprite pad file, a sprite pad project file. That's going to save the project here. So it's going to save how you set this up. For example, in our case, 80 sprite graphics. So it's going to save that and it's going to save what you drew in every one of these tiles. But that file is something that we can't use in our game. That file is just a project file that we can use here in Microsoft Windows with SpritePad. If we want to use uh, or when we want to use our graphics, we need to export our graphics. As a binary file. 
So we need to, let's say, okay, we're done. We have uh, drawn this little ninja guy. I'm done. So I'm going to export now. So then I go to File, Import, Export. There are several formats that you can choose from. We're going to choose Binary, Export, Sprite Set. So that's going to export all of these sprite graphics into one file. It's going to pack all of them into one file. First this one, then this one, then this one. So that's how it's going to be stored in the file. So file, import, export, binary, export, sprite set. So, um, let me just uh, save it wherever. So this is going to make a bin file, dot bin file. And it's not a good idea to have spaces in the file name. So I'm just going to write ninja guy. That's dot bin. So that's going to be my binary file. Now, when you save or sorry, when you export, you will get this screen. Please select a format for the sprite image attributes. Now we don't need to worry too much about this, but this one, S-E-U-C-K, that's Shoot em Up Construction Kit. So you can export sprites to be used in Shoot em Up Construction Kit. That's uh, an application where you can create your Shoot em Up game, uh, games. That's an application for the Commodore 64. We are not going to be doing that, so let's just keep it default at Sprite Pen here. I click OK. So every time you export, just leave it at default and click OK. So now I have my binary file here ninjaguy.bin. Alright, cool. So can we display this guy? All right, let's do it. Okay, so here am I, I am back at my Mac. Now, I didn't mention this uh, at the start. Uh, I should have done that. Uh, SpritePad and the other application that we'll be using, that's Windows only. What I was using right now was a virtual machine. So I can uh, run my uh, SpritePad in my virtual machine. Now, I maybe you could uh, make it work with something like Wine, Wine for Mac OS. Maybe you can run SpritePad in there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't help you with that. So if you can, I highly recommend uh, installing Windows in a virtual machine. Now this is if you're us using Mac OS. If you, you're using Windows, there is none, there's not an issue at all. But uh, SpritePad and CharPad, those two applications are Windows only. I just uh, wanted to mention that. But anyway, now I'm back at my Mac here and I'm ready to start programming. So here's my Ninja Guile binary file, the one that I just exported from SpritePad. Okay, here's a main.asm file, and right now it's blank. So I'm just gonna start like I always do. Basic upstart to main, and main down here. So now we're going to look at something that we will look more at in detail later. But I'm going to place my sprites down here. So the way I do that is by writing uh, an asterisk, equal sign, and a memory address, like that. This will this says whatever comes after this, that's where uh, I want you to put this. Uh, yeah, whatever comes after this, put that at this memory address. So starting from address memory address 2000, we're going to start filling in something. What should we fill in? 
let's fill in our ninja guy dot bin file so here's another thing don't worry we're going to look at this thing as well in a future episode so to get this binary file in here i need to write dot import space binary space and in quotation marks i need to write ninja guy dot bin so the file name dot import binary and the file name that's that what i want uh, that's what i want to be included at memory address 2000 starting at memory address 2000 okay great so this is going to put my sprite graphics at memory address 2000 so now let me just put this guy last time by the way last time i said that we were going to move some sprites and we didn't do that don't worry we're going to do that in the very next episode because we're going to read joystick input in that episode but for now let me just place this uh, guy on the screen so i say lda um, let's say 150 uh, and i'm going to store 150 in d000 so pop quiz do you know what's going on here right now well if you don't let me remind you i'm saying load a with 150 store that in the memory address d1000 that means now i'm setting the x position of the first sprite so sprite zero so x position maybe i should um, put that down here x position of sprite zero and i'm going to do the same thing for the y position lda but this time i'm just going to write 100. i'm going to store 100 in memory address d001 that's right uh, that's the y position of sprite zero now i've set the x position and the y position of sprite zero okay cool let me go back to my graphics here um if i can find him let's see oh where did you go oh sorry let me import i didn't save the file i just exported the guy so let me import him last time i exported him now i'm going to import him so import export binary import sprite set and there he is so now i'm going to import my bin file there he is because i just want to check what color he was and turns out he's light red this is the sprite color these other other two colors those are the uh, extra colors so let's do this right let's make our little guy appear like this on the Commodore 64 screen so light red and black for extra color one white for extra color two okay all right so first of all we have set our x and y position now let's set the color lda so now we have talked about that every color has its own color code here's the thing it's a good thing kick or sorry sublime here sublime uh, when set in this commodore 64 mode uh, if you could call it that um, it has a great function for us what we could do right now instead of for example writing one for the color white i could actually write the word white here so 
Um, uh, this is just to make it easier for us. We don't have to remember the color codes. We just need to write the name of the color. So it's really handy. So for example, in this case, I can just write, and by the way, I think you need to use capital letters. Let me try, yeah. So you need to use capital letters. So light red, for example. Uh, and I'm going to store light red. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what color code light red is. So this is a really handy function. Anyway, I'm loading light red. By the way, we still need this hashtag because this is still a number. So this is just uh, to make it handy for us as programmers. So we don't need to remember the color codes. But don't forget the hashtag. It's still a number. So load A with light red, whatever the color code is. But store that in the memory address that keeps track of the color of sprite zero. What's the memory address that keeps track of the color for sprite zero? D zero, do you remember? Two zero. That's the memory address that keeps track of the color for sprite zero. All right, now uh, I also need to set the extra colors. So let me make a comment here. Um, sprite zero color. Let's just call it that. But now I need to set the extra colors. So it's really simple, pr pretty much the same thing. Uh, first, I need to set extra color one. That was black if I'm not mistaken. So LDA hashtag black. Now this one, do you remember this address? All right, so that was D025. That's the memory address for uh, extra sprite, no, no let's call it uh, sprite extra color one, that's D025. So now extra color one for sprites is gonna be black. So the color for sprite zero is going to be light red. So I just have just one more color here and that's LDA and uh, white. Now I'm going to store that in uh, the address for extra sprite extra color two. That's D026. So sprite extra color two. So now I've set the uh, color for sprite zero. I've set the uh, sprite extra color one. I've set the sprite extra color two. Now there's just a few more things left now. Now I need to say what sprite graphic do I want for sprite zero? Okay, like last time, how we, we, we uh, find this number is a little weird, but just a quick repetition. If you can remember this, one sprite is 64 bytes, or sorry, one sprite graphic is 64 byte. One sprite graphic is 64 byte. All right, 64 byte. And to make it easy, I'm going to convert it to hexadecimal now. So that's 40. Now, if we can remember this thing. Now we stored our sprite graphics here at memory address 2000. What I need to do now to find my index is just write my memory address 2000 and divide that by 64. Now, 
I just found out that 64 in hexadecimal is 40. So I'm ju just dividing the memory address by 64, the size of the sprite graphic. Default sprite uh, graphic size. All right, so divide that by 40. And then I end up with 80. Now again, let's not dive into the details of the math there or anything like that. Let's just try to remember that simple rule. Divide the memory address where the graphics are stored. Divide that by 64. And then you find the starting index. Now that's just to find a starting index because the very next graphic is 81. So the next one after that will be 82 and so on. So it's just to find this starting index. Right, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, the index I re need right now is this 80 in hexadecimal. So I need to load A with the hexadecimal number and by now I'm sure you know that we use a dollar sign in front of hexadecimal numbers. So number 80. I'm going to load A with the hexadecimal number 80. Then I'm going to store that. Where do I store that? Now it's getting a little tricky. Do you remember the memory address where we stored the uh, sprite pointer index for sprite zero. Well, if you don't, let me show you. It's zero F, no, uh, yeah, zero, zero, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, what's, uh, <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so zero seven F, Eight. There we go. Sorry about that. So 07F8. I'm asking you if you remember it. I don't even remember it. 07F8. That's the um, index for what sprite graphic to use for sprite 0. So sprite 0 um, sprite pointer index. Let's just call it that. So I need to uh, store this number in the sprite pointer for sprite zero. Hmm. All right. This is starting to look uh, pretty good now. We have set the X position, Y position, sprite color. We have even set the uh, two extra colors and even the sprite pointer, uh, sprite pointer index. Now, by default, sprites are not set up as uh, multicolor sprites. By default, the sprites are high resolution. So we need to do one more thing here. We haven't talked about this, but there's one memory address that keeps, do you remember the uh, memory address where we could enable or disable sprites? So there's one memory address where each of the bits can be a one or a zero. And for every one of those eight bits, that's on or off for the individual sprites. So zero, off, one, on. So we can uh, disable or enable sprites in one memory address. It's the exactly the same thing with multicolor. So here, first of all, let's do the multicolor. So I'm going to load a binary number here. And then I need to use the percent sign. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. I'm going to say enable multi uh, color for sprite 0. So I need to set a 1 here at bit 0. Again, starting at bit 0 on the right side here. All right. So where do I store this? I'm going to store it at D01C. 
So there are so many memory addresses. I mean, the Commodore 64 has over 65,000 memory addresses. Now, a lot of those are free RAM, but there are so many memory addresses that you need to remember. So the Commodore 64 memory map website is such a great resource for finding stuff like this. But memory address D01C, that's the memory address that keeps track of uh, if a sprite is um, high resolution or multicolor. If it's zero, then that's high resolution. If it's a one, then that's a multicolor. So that's why I'm storing a one here for sprite zero. I'm enabling multicolor for sprite zero. And finally, I need to do the same thing with the sprite enable address. So once again, I need to load a binary number here. And I'm setting a one for sprite zero. I'm saying enable sprite zero. And I need to store that in the memory address for the sprite, uh, the, the sprite enable memory address. And that STA, that memory address is D015. Uh, so in this memory address for every one or zero, that's one sprite. Zero, that's disable sprite. One, that's enable sprite. All right. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on in my head, so hopefully I didn't forget anything. Anyway, let me exit by writing RTS like I did before. Now, X position, Y position, sprite color, extra color one, extra color two, sprite pointer index, you have enabled multicolor for sprite zero, you have enabled sprite zero, and we have import or put our sprite graphics here at address 2000. Hmm, think this should work. Let's try to run this code now. Hey, there he is. That's good news. Great stuff. So maybe you could see it, but he is in fact in multicolor. This pixel is wide and maybe you can see that he's a little bit blocky but anyway there he is at uh, the x and y position that we specified he has the right color from what, what i can see the uh, extra color one and two seems to be set correct his sprite uh, graphic is definitely correct and as I said, he is in multicolor mode and he is definitely enabled. So there we go. Our first piece of uh, kind of fun code where we actually place a sprite with a graphic on the screen. All right. Well, hopefully I didn't forget anything today. I think I covered uh, pretty much everything. Now, there's always more we could talk about uh, with sprites. Um, and uh, we'll probably uh, get to, I don't want to say everything, but we'll cover quite a lot during the, the entire course here. So I think we have a pretty decent uh, base now for, for uh, handling sprites. So. As I said, next time we'll start looking at how we can read joystick input and how we can combine that with our sprite graphic. So that's, uh, that's really fun, combining those two, because then we can move our sprites around on the screen with a joystick. So that's it for today. Hope you had fun. and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.